All right, we've talked about regular uh, counts tables, just how to count some categorical things uh, and put them in a basic table uh, that we can later turn into a chart or something like that. Now we're going to do it with a numeric variable instead of uh, before the categorical. So with the numerics, we can't really count uh, you know, how many uh, of each one there is because there's only one 213.43, there's only one 291.16, etc. So we just end up counting one of each thing and end up back where we started. Instead with numerics, what we have to do is create bins uh, or ranges that we can count these numbers into. All right, so uh, to start, we got to figure out how how big is the correct size for a bin. Uh, it's not really a, a given, uh, and you have to kind of use your best judgment. And so to do that, we're going to sort by order size first, and we can see kind of how broad our bins need to be. So we need to go from nineteen dollars and thirty two cents down to four hundred ninety five. So we have a little uh, less than five hundred dollars worth of range total that we have to cover. Uh, generally we're going to cover it in equal size chunks so we're not going to do 0 to 25, 25 to 100, 100 to 30 um, because that ends up looking really weird. We want it to be sets of 25 or sets of 50 or sets of 100, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, and so if we did sets of 25 in this case from 0 to 25 then 25 to 50 etc we would need 20 bins. We would end up with a really big table that's hard to read. Uh, it would cover a very large space. Uh, so uh, instead of that, we, we want to back down to where we have less than 10. Uh, so 10 exactly would be bins of 50, so we go 50 and then do 100, 150, etc. That would be 10. Uh, we could do increments of 100, so we just do 5 bins from 0 to 100, 100 to 200, etc. Uh, I think that's probably the one I would pick here. Uh, if you wanted a particular exact amount, you could figure out kind of the minimum. So if I wanted exactly seven ranges to count into, I could do equals. We've got to cover about 500. We divide that by seven. We got to do at least 71.43 per bin, although this would be a really bad number to pick because uh, it would be weird cutoff points. Hard to read. So let's do zero to 100, 100 to 200. Uh, that's how we'll start. So we'll just go ahead and call this order size. I don't like typing dollars into the ranges. If you do, that's fine. I prefer to put them up here. Um, and then we can start typing in, okay, I want to go from zero to a hundred dollars with the first range and then one hundred dollars, two hundred dollars with the second. And now we run into another problem. Um, we have a gap now. Uh, so from here to here, uh, we either have a problem of uh, if we hit 100 exactly, we have to count it twice, which would be a problem. Um, but if I fix that by doing this, okay, well then instead I'll make this 101 to 200. Well, now we have a, uh, a problem of we're not counting all the possible outcomes. Because like, for instance, right here, I have $100.17 for an order. That is not in this range or in this range. So to fix that, we can do it a couple different ways. Um, in this case, we can just do 100 and then... Uh, 0 0.01 uh, you could go you could go up to uh, or down here you can do 100 uh, I'm sorry 0 0.01 down here so that would fix it <coughs> or we can leave 100 here and put 99.99 uh, .99, so all the way up to 100 um, either one will fix it if we do this then this one needs to also become 100 0.99. So whatever you think works better visually is fine. Uh, or you can build the whole table out uh, with 0 to 100, 100 to 200, 200 to 300, and then at the bottom make a rule uh, kind of explaining what happens in a tie break situation. So if we have exactly 100, do we round up or down? So you can kind of do it however you want. I'm going to do it this way for now. Um, oh, this needs to be 199, 99. There we go. Uh, 200. 299.99 and then 300 to 399.99 400 to 499.99 now we've covered all of the numbers here in our order size column we just have to count them so number of orders we'll convert that to percent of orders and then we'll make it pretty and we'll have a basic table all right <clears throat> the totals down here. So from 0 to 99.99 goes from here to here, which again is 17. So 
so you just count manually. We'll talk about automating here in a second. 16, 21, 18, 9, and we should have 81 things. 18, 9, all equals to sum those up, 81. So we know we have the right number of things counted. <clears throat> Let's convert those to percents. Equals this over the total. We want to lock the total because when we drag it down, we want to divide by 81 every time. Double click. Drag this over. Change to a percent just like the last time we built one of these tables. All right, and then we'll put borders. So that's what the table is going to end up looking like. If you don't like manually counting, I showed you a way on the categoricals how to do it with a count if statement. You can use a count if and set ranges like this. It's a lot more work. Um, once you get it down, it's not too bad. Uh, but if you're only counting 81 things, I would just go ahead and do it manually. It's probably just as fast. If you're counting, 500 or 1,000 things, uh, you probably do want to learn how to do the count if, uh, and maybe I'll, I'll do that in another video. But for now, uh, this is an, a good number uh, count chart, uh, and I don't want to confuse the issue. So uh, for that count if, um, you need a little bit more advanced, maybe, and I'll set up a video after we kind of have all the other basics out of the way. So anyway, set up bins uh, to meet meet the rules, make sure all the bins are the same size, that they collect everything over here, they only count everything once, etc. Uh, count them, build the table just like we did with the categoricals, and you're done. So there's the numeric counts. Uh, next time we'll start talking about turning these into um, uh, table or charts uh, or graphs, and we can play with the graphs and things like that.